Rock Guys would like to welcome Fred Gorhow. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, how are you, Brian? Good, good. Um, basically, you know, this interview is about uh, the benefit that's coming up, Rock and Relief uh, for Union Beach on February 2nd at uh, Roxy and Duke's uh, Roadhouse. Uh, how'd they contact you to play the show? Uh, and tell me a little bit about what uh, people can expect. Well, we pretty much decided to do the show. Uh, myself and Rocco from American Angel had started talking, and uh, I had already been in touch with the guys in Push because uh, two of the guys grew up in Union Beach. That was hit very, very hard. Um, so we said, you know what, this would be a great opportunity to get back together and uh, you know do something worthwhile because we hadn't played... Uh, God, it's been 20 years, I think, since we were back together. So we decided to do it, and then uh, we decided to look for a venue. And uh, Roxy and Duke seem to be a great place to do it. It's pretty centrally located for all the bands. And uh, so we chose to do it there. Plus, it's got a great atmosphere. It, the way, if you've never been there, the way it's set up is really cool. Cool, cool. Now, uh, the members, can you tell me uh, all original members or, or who's playing with the band? Yeah, all the original members, uh, myself, Rick Maurer on vocals, Jimmy Forrest on drums, and Billy Sink on bass. Cool, cool. The no. original lineup as it started in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you tell me how long your set will be or, or anything about the show? Because like, it's going to be new to everybody, you know, this, uh, this uh, benefit. Yeah, it's it's probably gonna. We're probably doing about fifty minutes, maybe an hour. Um, we'll do uh, a good bit of our originals. We're gonna throw a couple of cover songs as a surprise in there, and, and probably a surprise guest will jump up. Um, but it's gonna be a good night. It's definitely gonna be a good night. And we've gotten a lot of uh, our fans from back in the day that have contacted us. That oh my god, I can't believe you're flying again. And and I don't know if they're, they're thinking it's a permanent reunion, but. Uh, I don't know how permanent it'll be because we're, we're kind of spread out. Right. Um, Bill lives in Pennsylvania. Rick lives in Florida. But I don't, I don't think it's going to be the last time we ever get together, that's for sure. Cool, cool. Now, you definitely played a, a big diversity of music uh, with Explorer compared to Push and stuff like that. Um, your last album was 2011, Vengeance Rides and Angry Horse, which, which got good reviews. Um, can people foresee uh, another release from Explorer? Oh, absolutely. We have... Uh, the label that we're signed to, Pure Steel, we have a couple of records that we have to do. And uh, we're kind of in the throes of writing the next album as as we speak. Um, we've got, probably got about five or six that we're pleased with that are well-structured. And uh, we've got to write maybe, I guess, eight to ten more and then maybe chop it down to, to eight or nine. Nine seems to be the magic number. Uh, but Explorer songs aren't three minutes and 14 seconds either. We have, you know, sometimes they'll go for five, six, or eight minutes. Uh, we do have one song that's kind of epic. It's about 12 minutes long. Whether or not we're going to use that, I'm not sure. It's it's pretty good so far, but uh, it has nothing you know, gotten through the cut list yet. Cool, cool. Now, but yeah, Explorer will definitely be putting out another album. Uh, we'll probably be touring Europe again. Um, so it, it's, uh, I keep myself busy with it for sure. Very cool. Now with Explorer, you know, going overseas and stuff like that, um, how different are the fans over there compared to the United States? It's night and day. Um, in Europe, it's it's kind of like uh, 1985 all over again. Right. We, uh, we were welcomed with open arms there, and, and people knew us. I mean, we were in a 700-year-old village in, in a German forest and, and walked into the bar, and there was these... I, I think they were kids. They looked about 16 years old from Finland, and they knew us immediately when we walked in the bar. We we couldn't spend a dime in the bar. Wow. Um, but the people there are great. They I think it's it's more a way of life for them. They, they they schedule their vacation time around the festival season to make sure that they get to as many as they possibly can. Um, they live their life for it. Whereas it's more of a hobby for Americans. Right. Right. Definitely. Um, with this Sandy relief again, um, did it impact you in any way? I was very fortunate. I had a broken window in the middle of the night, and that was all I got. So uh, I was very, very lucky. I mean, and we lost power for a week, but uh, you know, I was pretty lucky. 
Right. So I wasn't really impacted much at all. Wow. Now, the music scene in New Jersey is uh, kind of stagnant, uh, um, to say the least. And um, really, is this the perfect location for the band? I think it's a great location. Yeah, we were even considering trying to find a bigger location. Um because Push expects to draw, you know, around 300 people. American Angel, I would expect, will probably draw more. Uh, Jester's a good drawing band. Um, Atomic Bitch Wax is a good drawing band. Um, the capacity for the club is 250, but you can never count on everybody that you expect to go to actually show up. Right. Um, so if we we're going to book uh, a place where there's, you know, 1,800 capacity and 400 showed up, then, then it would, would kind of, you know, be a bummer because it would look empty. Right. But this place, 250 capacity is good, and um, I think we'll uh, we'll fill the place up nicely. Yeah, I think it'll be sold and, out. And be actually. able to generate a decent amount of money. Right, right. Uh, donations will be taken at the door? Yeah, the donations will be taken at the door. There'll be uh, some some things being auctioned off. Uh, I think they're going to be running a 50-50. Um, but when you walk in the door, you're going to get a ticket to uh, to be right in, in the drawing immediately for, for a couple of the things that they're going to be auctioning off. Cool, cool. You have any other projects in the work? Yeah, I'm, during the winter time, I... Uh, I toured with uh, a Trans-Siberian Orchestra tribute band called Wizards of Winter. Cool. Um, it's kind of like seven weeks. It's got a shelf life because it's all you know Christmas music. But uh, I played sold-out shows from Virginia to Canada with them. So I'll be doing that again next next season. You know, uh, probably starting the end of November. Um, the places that we sold out last year are already were already booked for next year. So we've got five or six already booked for well this coming Christmas. It's actually this year. Um, I work on a couple of different cover bands. I do some acoustic stuff. Uh, all I do is play guitar. Um, I also teach at the School of Rock in, in Marlboro. Cool. So uh, if anybody needs lessons, give us a call. Cool, cool. And, well, uh, so I keep myself uh, definitely busy in the music arena. Cool, cool. Well, I thank you for uh, giving us a call today and uh, you know giving a little plug for Rock and Relief benefit for Union Beach. Uh, would you like to say anything in conclusion to the fans out there? Yeah, thanks for all your support and thanks for wanting to hear us still after, uh, what, 20 years and we're going to make sure we rock the house that night and just come out and support the, the people that so many people still lost everything and so many people still want back in their homes. I have a couple of close friends that are posting uh, hey, moving to a nicer hotel today and stuff like that, so Hey, while everybody's nice and safe and warm and had their holiday season all nice, uh, these people are still hurting bad. Cool, cool. Thanks very much, man. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it.